Members of council, the uh, mayor's running late because of a doctor's appointment, and the mayor pro tem, we believe, is out of town because of a death in his family. When that occurs, we do have a quorum. It is incumbent upon council to elect a member uh, of the five of you here to preside until hopefully the mayor arrives in just a short period of time. So uh, I'll act as the chair at this time. And, the oh, mayor. Oh, oh, he saved me. <laughs> <laughs> the mayor has arrived. We're in session, Mayor, and we were going to elect someone if you were going to be late, but since you're here, you can preside. It, it wasn't to replace you now. You're, yeah. you're not replaceable, <laughs> but uh, just, just fill in. It's all moved now, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, all moved now. <laughs> Call this regular workshop meeting of council to order. Uh, you have before you a copy of the proposed agenda for tonight's meeting, and I would entertain a motion at this time to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? And we're going to have a uh, some options given to us uh, on Sturgeon City. Mayor, members of council, good evening. Before we have that item, I'd like to introduce to you three young people who are students at UNCW. Uh, that's UNC Wilmington, the UNC school. Correct, yeah. students? Okay. Uh, they're working with us this uh, summer. Over the next nine weeks, they'll be working in community development, and they're primarily going to be dealing with uh, the youth uh, program associate. Uh, they'll be assisting in youth programs, the neighborhood uh, programs, and also city planning. This program is actually funded by the State Employee Credit Union. At this time, I'd like to call their names. Several of them have uh, what I'll call challenging last names, so I'm just going to call them on a first name. Uh, Cassio, would you stand up? Okay, Cassio, would you give counsel just a, que a, a brief background on yourself? Uh, my name is Cassio Borges. I'm, uh, I was brought to Jacksonville through the Marine Corps. Um, after I got out in 2012, I enrolled in Coastal Carolina Community College, uh, got my associates, and now I'm in UCW with a bachelor's in social work and a minor in psychology. Thank you very much. Uh, next, Hannah, please. Hello, my name is Hannah Hager. Um, I was brought here by way of the Navy. Um, I attend UNCW where I'm studying social work as well. Thank you. And then Mark. Hey, um, good evening, everyone. I'm from um, Philadelphia. I came here um, via the military, um, just like my friends over here. Um, uh, <coughs> I'm a student at UNCW. I'm pursuing a degree in business administration. And uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, these young people are very interested in government. They're going to learn a lot working with Lily and other staff members this summer. And again, we're just pleased that UNCW <coughs> and the uh, credit union were able to fund these internships. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, members of the council, we do come tonight uh, to talk about the Surgeon City Environmental Center. And I'm going to uh, start off with the last slide that you're gonna see from me, thoughts and recommendations. Now, I know Mr. Bittner said, great, a short presentation. This is the last slide I'm gonna see. You're gonna see this slide twice. And the reason why is I wanna stress to everybody the process that we're in. First of all, as manager, I'm not recommending you make any decisions tonight. What, what we face as a city is not a simple solution, and it's not a simple discussion, it's not a simple decision. All options that you're gonna see have fiscal challenges, and every option you're gonna see has impacts on the community. Whatever you do, this is one of those where where you are picking uh, potentially a solution of a group of challenging solutions. All options have merits and all options have negatives. And what I'm suggesting is that you take all of this information this evening and uh, come back in August and that you have a joint workshop with the Sturgeon City Board. Normally our workshops are simply designed for the council and the staff to discuss items. This needs to be a multi-party, meaning you and the Sturgeon City Board discussion when you finally make a decision. They are invested in this just as you are invested in this. So what I'm suggesting, the mayor sent out a letter I think a week or two ago inviting 
representatives to be here, and we're fortunate we have several of the board members from Sturgeon City here. But I am suggesting that on August the 2nd, that there be a joint workshop specifically to discuss these items and to have direct conversations with the Sturgeon City Board. Also, my understanding is they're in the process of creating a new pro forma. There was a pro forma issued to you about four years or so ago that talked about uh, their funding, that is, understand being updated. With that introduction, let's talk about the presentation. We're going to talk about the bonds that have been issued, the project overview, the current status of those of that project, options that you have, financial issues we all face, and then a schedule. During the presentation, I've asked the handsome and talented architect who's worked with us for several years, John Sawyer from Wilmington, to assist in this. He is the person who has really been in the trenches working on the original design and working on modifications. To refresh your memory, in 2012, we issued a $29.1 million bond issue. We generally refer to that as a $30 million issue. Technically, it was 29.1. In that, there were three projects listed, Center for Public Safety, Fire Station 2, and the Sturgeon City Phase 3. Interestingly enough, the bond is designed into two components, the must build and the could build. The must build are what? The Center for Public Safety and the Fire Station. Now, why are they must build and the other you have an option? Because we pledge the land under Fire Station 2 and the Center for Public Safety to secure the bonds. We did not pledge the, Sur the Sturgeon City land. We were not required to. So again, 25.1 million went to the must-build projects, and you have built those, and they are completed. The bonds, the optional project, is a $4 million, which you set aside for the Sturgeon City Phase 3. No land was pledged, therefore the city has options. I'd like to read to you a couple of uh, things that we have researched. This is an email that came from Donald U-B-E-L-L, -L, U-B-E-L. He is the guru, if there is the right term, on bond in the state of North Carolina. He is our bond council. <coughs> We ask him, is there any alternative to building the building? Yes. Second question, can we simply repay the funds? No. The 2012 LOBs, limited bonds, limited obligation bonds, are not callable until April 1, 2022. You may, however, use the excess proceeds to pay the April 1, 16 principal and interest payment, which would soak up, his words, not mine, which would soak up a good chunk of the excess. Now, you have to remember, this was written in February. So what he was basically saying is, you could use this money to pay your next bond payment. Now, obviously, April has passed, but the concept still is there you could use the excess money to pay your bond payment. I believe with the balance to be used for future principal and interest payments until the excess is fully applied. Pending disbursement of this purpose, the excess should be invested at or below the yield of the 2012 LOBs. Obviously, the reason for that is to avoid arbitrage. The second question, did we obligate ourselves to build it, meaning the Sturgeon City building, on this particular site? No. This building and the site were not part of the collateral for the borrowing. That's what I testified to you in a moment ago. Number three, can we substitute another project for this building? Could we build another structure at another location? Yes to both questions. For the second, Nothing need to be done under the documents. For the first, we would need to amend the definition of projects under the 2012 installment financing agreement 
to encompass whatever new project the city wanted to undertake. Now, let me explain to you what he's saying there, and you're going to see this in the option. You could build the Sturgeon City building down at Sturgeon City. Or what he's saying, you can take that building and move it anywhere you want to move it and build it. If, however, you're not going to build the building and you want to build something else, a sports complex, whatever, you would have to go back because you're changing what you said you were going to spend the money on and you'd have to go back through a process. That doesn't mean you can't change the project. It just means it's not as simple as moving it from location A to location B. Now, none of this is intended to, to suggest what you should do. It's to document that these are not staff discussions. This is not staff opinions. These are from your legal counsel. We'll be happy, as it becomes a public record, be happy to make copies available to everybody. I'd like to ask the attorney, do you want to expand on this in any way? You've done a great job reading. <laughs> <laughs> they don't let me do math in public anymore, but it's okay reading, John. Okay, I, I appreciate that. Now, with that, I'd like to spend a minute uh, going a little further. The bonds were issued for 20 years, from 012 to 032. 25.1 million the city is fully responsible for. The other four million, we have roughly an annual payment, and the payments float up and down, it's not a static payment, of roughly $300,000, and it's a combined payment. What does that mean? It means that while the 25.1 is paid strictly by the city, the other four million is paid by a combination of sources. It's paid by Sturgeon City, They've made now four payments, totaling $225,000. <clears> That's math. That's math. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I guess four payments would be $300,000. Sorry about that. That is math. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for that. <laughs> the TDA, they have contributed $150,000 a year for four. And if you multiply that, you get... Six hundred. Thank you. <laughs> and the city has paid the balance. So it is a combined payment, and any decision that you make on August the 2nd or a later date, these are factors you have to take into account. Currently, the Sturgeon City project, which had $4 million in it, has a current balance of roughly $3.7 million. Why? Because John Sawyer does a lot of pro bono work, but this was not one of them. Is that right? Okay. Four payments received. If I just kept reading, I would have not had to. Four payments received. 300000 by Sturgeon City, 600000 by the TDA, and right now, 388 from city funds. The issues that we face on this project, landfill closeout. The reason why we're having this discussion today instead of two or three years ago is that we still don't have a site that we can actually build on. We're getting closer and closer and closer. Uh, John Carter, uh, Deanna, Glenn, Ron, and myself, and maybe a couple of other folks went to Diener back when it was called Diener. That's how long ago it's been. In January of this year. And we said, folks, this has got to come to an end. We have tried and tried to figure out how we close out the landfill. And they told us at that time, well, we're close. We think that we can work this thing out. We even hired an attorney, as you'll recall, to help us there. As of 5, 16 this afternoon, we still don't have it settled. But at least we're getting closer. But until we issue the closeout documents and sign the land restrictions, we can't build anything down there on land that's still covered by the, by the um, old landfill. Now, there's a portion of the property down there that's not covered by the landfill, and that's where the sewer plant was. So as long as you go inside the envelope of the sewer plant, you can build things there. The second is the construction cost, and Mr. Sawyer is going to show you in a few minutes 
what has happened to the cost of construction. We started this at a time that construction was slow and the prices were good. Uh, the prices are not so good now. We've talked about the combined bond payments. We're going to be talking about the million dollar shortfall in just a minute. And then the latest thing that's come up is the FEMA maps. As you all know, we have briefed you on the fact that uh, FEMA is about to issue, and on June the 30th of this year, they will actually be publishing their maps. They don't go into effect that day. We have a 90-day appeal period. We'll be discussing that further with you. There are many issues on this project. Tonight, we'd like to show you six options and the pros and cons of each. You will come up with additional pros and cons. And I hope that over the next month while we study this, that the Sturgeon City Board and y'all would continue to add pros and cons to each. And then we're going to talk about the financial and programmatic issues. The first two options I'm going to introduce, and then I'm going to ask John Sawyer to really fill in the details. I'll refresh your memory that the building, when originally designed, was a little, little under 13,000 square feet. <coughs> the current opinion of probable cost is $4.7 million. It's a million dollars over your budget. Now, the Sturgeon City Board did what I thought was a very proactive thing. When they realized the dilemma, they said to Glenn and to the staff, go talk to John Sawyer and see what he can do to bring that within the budget. And what John's going to show you in options one and two is the building as originally designed, which is 4.7 million and roughly 13,000 square feet, and the downsizing of the building to be within budget and roughly 9,226 square feet. So with that, here is John Sawyer. Now, I'm actually going to switch places with John because he's going to need to use the annotator. I'm going to try. You're going to try. I'm try. <laughs> Thank you for all the hard work everybody is doing on this. Um, I want to start by just kind of refreshing everybody on what the project is because it's at least what I think the project is. <laughs> it's more than just a building. Um, Sturgeon City, as you all know, has been going a long time. It has a master plan. It has a, some uh, very interesting goals and worthwhile goals to, to tell the story of the, the wastewater treatment plant, how it failed, how Wilson Bay was um, repopulated, and the whole, that whole story. It's, it's, uh, it's inspiring, and it's one of the goals we are, we are working towards is to make that a, um, a um, educational opportunity for, um, for everyone. The project that we've designed and, and actually was, was uh, laid out in a master plan includes all the parking that you see in this slide. All the green area is the project site. The orange element there is the building itself. Um, in, in this area, that is a outdoor um, courtyard space. Uh, the site is designed to accept school buses so they can turn around, drop kids off. Um, this is a covered outdoor space. And then the building itself is very, very flexible so that it can serve educational needs, it can serve a, a large event. The reason it needed to be flexible is that uh, that goal was given to us in designing the building so that the pro forma for, the, for Sturgeon City works, so that they could host, they could rent the space, they could host large events. The original plan, uh, this is the original plan, when all of the movable walls are open, and we have one large um, space. Uh, this space, we've shown it with uh, tables and chairs, and we've shown a seating capacity of 432 uh, people. Also, a, you know, a, a head table. And in this plan, the, there is a, a um, caterer's kitchen 
with access uh, in. There is storage in the building for all the chairs and tables so that you can use the space for other events. The lobby is the primary entry point. Um, it has a lot going for it in terms of supporting a large event. And the outside space is also uh, available uh, for that use. Uh, part of the flexibility that we designed in the project was to um, uh, set this up so that it could also be subdivided. Uh, we used a uh, vertical operating folding wall. Uh, this folding wall in this room is a horizontal sliding one. The ones in this building raised vertically. Uh, it's a, it is a, uh, some would say, a upscale solution, but that was the goal, is to make this facility more upscale than a school because we needed to invite uh, events to, to come here and that this would be a desirable place for those kind of functions. In this drawing, we're showing three different scenarios, things that could happen, you know, a public meeting set up where it's tables and chairs, a luncheon kind of thing. Um, and then in this, in this last section, it's set up for Sturgeon camp activities with two groups at tables, mobile carts, uh, doing some of the activities that, that Sturgeon City does. And the other thing about it is we have another movable wall in this location and that opens up this service space with a utility sink, counter, all of that kind of thing to support the educational function. Uh, in, in this scheme, the, the movable wall is closed, so it's closed there also. So all the flexibility in the building is one of the things driving the cost. When you design buildings to have this much flexibility and do this many things, it does increase the cost. It's not really a, it's not a school any longer, it is a multi-purpose facility. The, the cost, let me back up, the cost of building this, uh, it was very close to being on budget. We had a few things we were trying to negotiate out of the job or, or trying to work out of the job in order to get right on budget before going out for bid. The, these are the construction documents or the bid documents. These are the drawings, all the plumbing, mechanical, electrical, structural. That's the specification book. And it, it literally was days before hitting the street for bids. When Deanna, bless her heart, <coughs> saw on the survey a note that said, well, and she, in our coordination effort, she said, okay, who's closing the well? And we thought, it's an irrigation well, it's an old water well from something. And we went into, you know, and so we started trying to find out, you know, what about closing this well? And that's when the bottom fell out and we, everyone learned that, wait a minute, that's a monitoring well. And it brought up the whole history we wish we had known earlier, but anyway, that's water over the dam. But this was ready to go out for bid, and uh, these are dated uh, May, excuse me, September of 2013. It was a pretty good time to be bidding projects. What has happened now is that um, we have seen um, 10 to 12 percent escalation of construction cost between 2013 and 2017. And uh, we confirmed that with our independent cost estimator. Uh, he went through, redid, you know, looked at unit cost. So we, we're not just saying that, we do have some independent um, confirmation. So that didn't help. Um, when, uh, when the budget concern and this project looked like it was beginning to go again, we were asked to determine what would we have to do to get the project back within budget to get it built within the funding that's available. And that's, this is a plan that will do that. It does reduce the building. It, it removes one bay right there of the multipurpose room. 
it still seats uh, 268, I believe, at tables. Uh, it seats more than that in a in a seating in a chairs only sort of seating arrangement. It does have the catering kitchen remains, storage remains, and it is. Uh, the other important thing I want to say is that none of the site work changes in this scheme. The site and the location of this building is important to Sturgeon City. So the benefit of the parking space, the bus route, the outdoor courtyard, the covered outdoor space, which is right there, uh, all of that remains. The thing we have reduced is, is the size of the space. Um, when it, it still has a folding wall, but now the folding wall is more like the folding wall in this room. It is much taller and it's motorized. But what that does, it's less expensive and it lets us lower the height of the roof because we don't have to have stacking space for the wall up above the ceiling. We still are able to keep, you know, a 16 foot ceiling height in that space. Uh, and it, it still can be subdivided so that we can have summer camp activities uh, in, in separate spaces. And we still have the movable wall here and another one there that opens up the support space for the <coughs> summer activities. Um, one other thing about the flexibility in the building is that we designed the restrooms, which are right there, with some gates that close for after hours use. So you can close a the gate there, you can close one on the gift shop, and you can access the restrooms from outside, from the courtyard. And another, that's another piece of the flexibility of the building is it let the Sturgeon City use this building in lots of, lots of ways to support activities uh, in, on the ground, out on the docks, out in exploring Wilson Bay. They would not have to open up and staff the entire building in order to do that. So, but again, all the flexibility, it does add to the construction cost. That's all of the options. Go back to that. Do you have questions of John before we begin to discuss other options? Could you, uh, one question. Yeah. Go back to the previous side of the slide layout. This one? Yeah. Indicate on there where the area, the particular area is that's in question as far as. You're going to have to go all the way down the slide. Back. Yeah, back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Deanna, it's in that area. Is that correct? No, it's go up to the right where the where his circle is where the bus, yes. That whole area is what we would have to identify as restricted use. A restricted use would could include a parking area, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. I mean in, in negotiating the restriction restrictive covenants, the first group that we got back from the state basically said this the entire site, not just here. All of the land down there, other than where the sewer plant was, would be under a restrictive covenant that said that the city could not do anything that broke the ground without getting approval from Deanna. We couldn't plant a tree. We couldn't dig a ditch. We couldn't put in a building. We couldn't erect swings. And we simply said, that's just not going to happen because we would be turning over our ownership to the state and that's just not acceptable now at this point what we believe where we believe we are and i want to continue to stress believe because every time we talk to deaner you just you, you don't know where we are we believe at this point that only the area shown here in in the red circle is going to have that restriction that everything else shown in green we are going to have the right to do whatever we want to. There are other parts of the park where the landfill mound is and those areas where the playground is that that same restriction is going to be placed there. But 
At this point, through John's leadership, we have been able to negotiate down to the red circle. And we don't have a problem with that because as long as they're going to let us put in parking and put in the landscaping that we have submitted to them, that's fine. We never intended to build a building down there. But even that, we've been working for 45 days to just finalize the final wording on this. So hopefully, within the next several weeks, we will be to the point where we are able to sign the necessary documents that will free up all of this from any restrictions and only have this area here with those restrictions, plus the rest of the park. Sir, did that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. John, do you want to clarify any of that? John, do you want to clarify? Yes. This? And for the purpose of this meeting, two out of three people who are speaking are named John. So let's talk about the options. And again, I encourage you all to look at these pros and cons and identify more pros and cons on every option. Option one, which was the original building, you build it as designed, it will seat roughly 450 people. Now, John had a little bit lower number, I'll use 450. It has three meeting areas, it has three to six classroom areas, meaning that the meeting rooms can be divided into, into sections. It meets the community, community funding commitments. This is the building that Sturgeon City pledged money to. This is the building that the TDA pledged money to. It meets the master plan goals, and I'm sure there are other pros. The con, obviously, the biggest con is it's a million dollars over the budget. Now, it may be less than a million, it may be more than a million. We are not to the bids yet. One of the other pros is these are ready to go. You don't have to spend any more architectural money. These things are ready to be bid. That's a pro that I just thought about, and we can add that to it. One of the cons is it's a million dollars over. It impacts the city CIP because you're going to have to get that money from someplace if you build it. Funds are also going to be needed for furniture because in addition to the money to build it, whatever you build, you're going to have to put classroom chairs and seatings and tables and all those in there. And then there's the operating budget. Uh, this is not going to be an inexpensive building to operate. When you have the volumetrics that you have here, you have large spaces for heating and air conditioning. When you look at the pros and cons of the smaller building, you're seating 300 people. I think your number was a little less. You have two meeting areas. You have two to four classrooms. It's available within the funds. That's one of the biggest pros. It meets some of the community needs it has smaller operating costs because it's a smaller building, and it keeps your funding commitments. And I want to stress, in my life, I can tell you the biggest con here is money. The biggest pro here is you have the money. Now, that doesn't mean you should do either one of these. I'm just pointing out that's, that's the biggest pro to me. The cons on the smaller building, and I've told the Sturgeon City Board this, I don't know that it meets their needs. And I don't know that it meets the neighbor, the community's spatial needs. Uh, the other thing that I fear, and I'm going, I, I want to be very upfront with you on this, whatever you build down there is going to set the benchmark of performance for the future 20 years of this city. If you build the big building or this building, and you can occupy it and you can keep it busy and it can pay its own bills, then at some future date you'll build a civic center and you'll build another big recreation complex and you'll build and build and build. The fear that I have is that whatever you build, the big building or this building, if you can't keep it occupied and you cannot fund it financially with the proceeds that come in, you're creating a white elephant that you'll never get away from. And I said this to the Sturgeon City Board not too long ago. My fear is you're build, if you build option two, 
is you are setting yourself up for failure. This is the same size building as two private buildings here in town. This isn't bigger than two of your existing buildings here in town. And the question is, if you're competing with a 300 seat building, will they come to Sturgeon City or will they go to Western Boulevard? Will they come to Sturgeon City that has no restaurants in the area, no hotels in the area, versus going to Western Boulevard where you have those things? You still have furniture funding and you have operational cost. And in fairness, the operational cost is going to be smaller with a smaller building. The third option is build a big building, but don't build at Sturgeon City. Cities own the Onslow Insight for however many years. What is it, 15 years? Cities owned it. The reason why you bought the Onslow Insight was why? To build a convention center. Well, I can tell you this is not a convention center but it's at least a step in the direction that will fulfill why you bought the property. 450 seats. It meets the funding commitment of the CDA. You're gonna see in a minute, it does not meet the funding commitments that Sturgeon City has given you now $300,000 for. One of the pros, it continues redevelopment. It's right in the neighborhood of Jacksonville Landing, Phillips Bridge, the Center for Public Safety, all the stuff you're trying to do downtown. Visibility and progress. What are the cons? Well, the first con is you still have to come up with a million dollars. Another con that was brought up to me the other day was you're actually increasing the cost of the project by whatever the price was for the Onslow Inn property. So what, what did the city pay for that? A million dollars. A million dollars. Tax value. So to so the project, you've added another million dollars. The biggest con is it does not meet the funding commitment of Sturgeon City. You build this building here, you're going to have to pay Sturgeon City back $300,000. And you're going to have to pick up their share of the debt from this point forward. So it's not just a, okay, Sturgeon City, here's a check for $300,000. What you've also said is that the general fund is going to pick up that extra 75000 that you're currently getting from Sturgeon City. That's why I say, as you look at these, folks, there aren't any good options here. You know, this is not like, you know, picking the, the prettiest horse in the race. The fourth option is simply no construction, pay down the debt. I read to you from the bond council what you can do. And one of the things you can do is you can direct the funds to pay down the debt. You will have interest payment savings. You will have no operating costs, no furniture costs, no impact on your CIP. The cons though are this, not building the building means you have to pay back Sturgeon City and you have to pay back the TDA. So you're paying back to people basically a million dollars. And the next bullet, the city pays the full debt from this point on. And of course, you lose the community improvement. So this is one of those where, again, uh, certainly an option you could take. It is not an option that is free. The fifth option is to go back to the basic thing that Sturgeon City needs, not the community needs, and different people will agree, different people will disagree. Sturgeon City, in my opinion, and I'm gonna state it that way, the number one thing that they need is classroom space. They don't need a 20 foot high ceiling, they don't need a 17 or 16, whatever you've adjusted it to, they need classroom space. So looking at the North Carolina school standards as presented and, and provided by our own school board, these are the classroom space. If you build a science classroom with all of the labs and everything, it's 1,500 square feet. If you build a science classroom for lecture where you have the two wet stations up front and the classrooms behind, 
you're dealing with 1,200 square feet. And based upon Dixon High School bids, they had $165 a square foot. I increased it to $170, 75 a square foot. You can see that between the three classroom buildings, the support functions, architectural fees, contingencies, you're somewhere around one and a quarter million. You may be up at one and a half million. You may be less than that. The point being, one of the options that could at least move Sturgeon City forward is to build classroom spaces down there so Paula and the people who run Sturgeon City can at least have more space to get more activities down there and to accomplish the number one goal. Because remember, this thing is actually called what? The Sturgeon City Education and Environmental Center. It's not called the Sturgeon City Conference Center. Now, the pros of this are it meets the Sturgeon City nonprofit needs. They, not, they may not agree with that. That's my statement. That's not theirs. The funds are certainly available because you still have $3.7 million. It also meets the Sturgeon City funding commitment. Now, they would have to agree to that. It lowers the utility bills and operating costs. Well, how does it do that? You're not dealing with the volumetrics that you're dealing with with a large building. You're dealing with much lower ceilings, different air conditioning systems, completely different mechanical approach. It has marginal impact on your CIP. It also has the potential for STEM space. You will recall months, probably now three years ago, we tried to get started with the STEM school down there. Well, you build four classrooms, because remember the school board was gonna bring in modular units. You build four real classrooms, and maybe you can get the school board to think a second time about building more stuff to actually have a STEM school down there. <clears throat> And then, of course, what you would do is whatever's left over of the $3.7 million, you would assign to debt payments. Here are the cons. Does not provide a conference space. Does not meet the TDA funding. If Sturgeon City agrees that it meets their funding commitment, there's no way this meets the TDA's funding commitment. Because I don't know how classrooms put heads on beds. Now, it's true, all the students go home at night and they sleep in a bed, but they're not in hotel rooms. So one of the major cons here is you're going to have to repay the TDA $600,000. And the con that I forgot to put on here was this. You're then going to pick up any debt service that they were paying. But now I think that's off balance by the fact the bottom one on the pros is you're able to use the balance of the $3.7 million to pay down debt. We would not be able to use a balance to repay the 600000 That would have to come out of city funds. Absolutely funds correct. Other, you, other you, could not touch, you could not touch the bond proceeds to pay back anyone, including yourself. That's going to have to come from the general fund. That's a good point. And the reason why is because there's nothing in the bond documents that said we were going to do anything except build buildings so you can you can use it to pay down the debt you cannot use it to pay someone who's helped you pay the debt but richard when you use it to pay down the debt you don't have to take money from your general fund to make those payments so it is money is i think the term is fungible uh i think it would all kind of bear out over time. yes but you would have to pay the first four payments that have been made I want to make sure i have the right the first four payments that have been made, you would have to pay back out of the general fund to the TDA. Option six, direct bond funds to other projects. You know, what we've been told is, yes, you don't have to build this building. You've seen an option where you could move the building to another location. This is the option that they talk about. Yes, you can build something else with it if you want to, but you're going to have to go through the process to get the project approved. They also let us know that that's not necessarily impossible to do. You could build parks projects. You could move the downtown revitalization, the four blocks here in front of City Hall, forward. That's the New Bridge Street. You could build more splash pads. 
you could do anything with the money that's a capital improvement project. You could not hire more policemen. You couldn't hire more firemen. You couldn't use it to pay salaries. But you could come up with other projects, one or multiple projects, if that's what you wanted to do. The pros, it advances a whole lot of capital improvement programs. I give you $3.7 million to do things with that you currently can't fund. No shortfall to address, meaning you don't have to find the million dollars. Many projects, many areas, many uses by citizens, marginal operating cost, and no furniture needed. <coughs> the cons, though, are, are hefty. <clears throat> the number two, if you did that, we as a city are going to have to repay $900,000, 300000 to Sturgeon City, 600000 to TDA. Now, that's assuming that whatever new project you came up with did not put heads in beds. If you came up with a project that put heads in beds, it's possible that TDA would keep their pledge for the 600000 But I don't want to assume that does not move the Sturgeon City Master Plan forward, and from that point on, the city must fund the total debt. This is the slide you saw at the beginning. Is, is there a, an, an option seven? There can be an option <laughs> seven, eight, nine, <laughs> ten. Well, I'm just th thinking, you know, if, if as an option, uh, you build, you build, to build, build a classroom facility, Possibly takes addresses their needs. We still probably would have to pay TDA back, but then you'd have instead of taking that money and and using it to pay pay debt service on that bond, could you then use that money for other projects? You you could. I mean that's and that's the type of uh, that. And the answer is yes. But according to this memorandum, even for the classroom buildings, we would have to go back and and get concurrence. But you're right. You could build one, two, three, four, five classroom buildings down there. You could then come up with three or four other parks projects or whatever you wanted. We'd package those up. We'd send them through the process. So that's certainly option seven. Now, I want to go back through the thoughts and recommendations. I strongly encourage y'all that we need to focus on this for the next many weeks and I encourage you, do not make a, has a hasty decision. We still haven't worked out the easements with DWQ, but even if we had, I would be saying to you tonight, don't be in a rush to make this decision because of the financial and fiscal challenges that every option faces. Uh, the other thing is think about the impact on the community. Every one of these has a different impact on the community. And by impact, I'm talking about not only the impact from a, from a, a progressive standpoint, I'm talking about the fiscal impact. Whatever you build, we then own it. And we're the ones who have to come up with the money every year to operate it. I'll remind you that the Center for Public Safety added to your general fund budget this year, Gail, how much money? $225,000. That was just yeah. It added a lot. It wasn't the bond debt. Y'all had already covered the bond debt. It was the operating cost. That took two-thirds of a penny of tax. So the other thing is this. There is no bad option in there, but there is no good option in there in my opinion. And again, these are just my opinions. And the last thing I'm going to encourage you to do is engage the, Sturg the Sturgeon City Board in a dialogue because they are taxpayers. They are not just Sturgeon City Board members who have given thousands of hours to trying to bring the Sturgeon City dream into reality. But as I've said to them, they need to look at option two, not with their heart and not with their passion, but we all need to look at option two realistically. Will that meet the needs 
And will we be glad or will we regret building a smaller building? And again, I'm looking forward to the new pro forma because my understanding is it, it, does, it does assume that, uh, that option two is the one that's going to be built, the smaller building, and it shows you how the Sturgeon City Institute can generate the funds. So those are the things that I would ask you to think about, and my recommendation is that you have whatever discussion you want tonight but you really focus on August the 2nd. We do not have a council meeting that night. That workshop can last as long as it needs to last. And if you're not ready on August the 2nd to bring it to conclusion, fine. Keep talking about it. Mayor, I turn it back over to you. I got a couple couple questions as far as estimating costs. And that, you mentioned the furniture and fixtures for the building. Uh -huh. And you've also mentioned building maintenance. Is there any been any estimate of that? What kind uh, of cost are you involved in that? Uh, <clears throat> we did an estimate on furniture in 2013, and uh, Mr. Phillips, I'm sorry to say I don't, I don't have that with me. I'm not trying to evade your question. I just don't want to throw something out there. We'll but, get that number. But we we, we will get and that. And operating costs. So it would be information I would like to know what you know, what are. How those also impact the options. I thought I remembered nine hundred thousand furniture and equipment. Maybe that's yeah. Probably did. And I have a question too for Gail. <laughs> we've committed seventy five thousand dollars a year, but yet we've been we've already started paying close to a hundred thousand dollars a year. The yes, city sir, the debt service goes down over time and the payments from the other entities are gonna be steady, so our obligation will it's been a little more than the 75 for the first few years, and then it'll go down as we go forward and actually be less than the 75. But, but some we average, we've been, we're, yeah, we're going to average 75 is what you, the what you right, of the life years. of the bond. Okay. Yeah. Now, the other thing, uh, before we, we leave, we're very pleased. Any other questions on the presentation? Because there's a little bit more discussion we want to talk about Sturgeon City. May, may I make one point? Um, one, of the, one of the thoughts we've had in our office is um, we are looking at ways to reduce cost, building cost, without sacrificing the goals. Um, and, and we have found some areas where cost could be, we think cost could be re reduced. We're working with a cost estimator to get that, to do it correctly. The other possibility that is easy to do with this project where it stands now is to take an alternate bid for the part of the building we're removing. And what that does is it, it gives you options after bids are received. You know, if, if some wonderful thing happens and we're, and we're able to build this entire building within the budget, wonderful. It, uh, I can tell you that right now, the bid climate, we're just seeing numbers that are all over the board. This is a high profile project. It's desirable. Uh, and you have a good group of contractors pre-qualified to bid it. So, uh, but I don't see any reason to throw away everything that's been done. We could simply take an alternate bid and downsize the building that way. What I'd like to do, uh, Charles Eford uh, has obviously spent a lot of his effort and, uh, and led the, the board, and we have opened up the, is it the 17th class? 18th. 18th class. Okay, the 18th class. I'd like to ask him if he would come up. Any comments that you'd like to make about the presentation so far, but I'd also like to ask him to, to give an update on the number of students that are enrolled in the current institutes. Mr. Eford, please. Um, I want to thank everyone for um, being here and giving me a few minutes to you know, speak on behalf of Sturgeon City. Twenty years ago, the New River was dead. It was polluted. You couldn't. There was no fish in it. Very little plants and everything. Wastewater had been dumped through the wastewater tr treatment facility. 
And the city council at that time said they went to the land application system that we're using now, as we all know. <clears throat> but they said, the river, it's our moral obligation to clean it up. While that was being done, the council was presented with a plan to make a wastewater treatment plant a monument to what things had gone wrong and set up a, in, in an educational center to try to educate young people and make them stewards of our river. Today, this week, is the 18th week, 18th year here, excuse me, 18th year of Sturgeon City. More than 2,500 high school students have gone through this, uh, this uh, institute over the 18 years. Just recently, one of the students posted that the leadership skills he learned led him to being elected president of his college student government. He said in his post he wanted to give back to the community that helped him. He was a former, obviously a former student of the institute. Now, we're interested in all the options, including the classroom. But I've got to be fair with our donors. We all have to be fair with our donors. We, you know, we've gone and we've solicited funds with option one, and uh, so we have to, you know, we have to remember that. The idea of the Tourism Development Authority had been we would help cooperate to contribute to the lack of meeting space in our community. With this building, it would be one of the largest spaces of rent for rent in this area. A few years ago, we were hosting programs for teachers to come to Sturgeon City for their recertification credits, which they had to get, you know, uh, periodically. They were spending the night in hotels. They were coming from all over the state. We had to discontinue that program because we didn't have any space for them. Over the last five years, We've had nearly 45,000 students come to Sturgeon City for either classes, field trips, summer camps, discovery labs, and special events. 45,000 students. It's, it's hard to believe, but it is. We, we need space down there. Paula and her staff, I mean, they're just, you know, coming through the gills down there. The programming, <clears throat> because we do charge for these programs, and it's a nominal fee because we want to make it affordable to everyone so we could in inspire more and more people there. But the we have hired nearly 50 people down there for these programs to help run them, and we have funded that through the income that we receive from these classes. And for the money, I want to remind, you know, we've been talking in every one of these options uh, it's just about about the furniture. The nonprofit agreed that we would raise the funds to, to put the furniture in that building. There is uh, roughly $146,000 uh, from a um, Golden Leaf grant that we have that can be used for technology uh, in the building. That, uh, that you know is sitting there for us to use uh, if and when we do build a building. I'm also, uh, we got with uh, Harry Brown and Phil Shepard and uh, George Cleveland, and together they came up with uh, $150,000 in funding to help us with the parking lot. And that is also still available for us. We're looking forward to sharing our new pro forma with you at the future meeting. We believe we have the capacity to, op the capacity to operate and sustain this building in a way that will make you all proud and live up to what our predecessors expected us to do, a place that will help create new stewards of our river. Now, as a businessman, as a citizen, I, you know, I know y'all have a tough job, and I wouldn't want to be sitting on any of these seats. And, but we would like to work for you, you know, work with you. Uh, we will be available uh, to help y'all with any questions that you may have. Uh, 
you know, between now and, and the August meeting. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be out of town. I have a meeting myself for that particular date. But uh, um, we will try to get you any information that you can that, that you may need and to help you make the right decision on this building. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, Charles. Any other items on this one? We do need to have a closed session on potential uh, property purchase, but we don't want to cut this discussion short. Anybody? I think out of courtesy uh, to Mr. Eford, uh, would you mind if we said that the, the, the first meeting in August is a flexible date? I think it's very important, since he has been a key player, to see if there is a time that he can be available. If you don't mind, we're going to say that the August 2nd date is flexible until we verify his schedule. Is that acceptable? Well, you, you're not going to have it on August 2nd anyway, because that's going to be national 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 national. Well, that solves that problem. I'm going to get with Mr. Eford and then let you know the actual. Because you got my email. Oh, too, okay. Right? It's Wednesday the 3rd. I guess I did. It's what promises to be published. Oh, that's right. You've already published that. Yeah. All that we can do. Then we'll work where we are. And I have gotten Mr. Thomas is also going to be out of town that week. So we so will we'll just find a mutual day. Okay. Anybody? Let's take a brief recess, then we'll come back and we'll close the session. Close we'll session. Go ahead and make the motion so we can come back in and we'll be in closed session there. That, that's fine. Uh, make the motion we go to closed session. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 